<laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get emotional. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the class of 2021 graduation. Yes, you can applaud. Welcome families, colleagues, and friends. And I also want to especially acknowledge our eighth grade teachers. Please raise your hand if you had a hand in helping shepherd these young people through this journey today. We are here today in the Presidio on this beautiful sunny day. I wrote this like a few days ago, but we're, <laughs> it's sunny today, thank goodness to celebrate our class of 2021. Uh, before we begin, we want to acknowledge that this is the Ohlone ancestral land and we're so gracious to the Presidio who we have formed a bond with this year as part of our Rob Hill and part of our Sport Scott days to be able to spend and congregate time with you and especially with our students over the course of this year. So we're very grateful and give deep gratitude to um, this community for that. Only a few short months ago, we were locked down due to COVID-19, navigating racial unrest in a worrisome 2020 election. We couldn't imagine, could barely hope that we would be able to learn together, let alone congregate to celebrate this wonderful class of amazing, amazing young people. So here we are, our SF Day family, and we will now begin our program. Good morning. Dear class of 2021, I am so proud of all of you. Congratulations for making it through the most challenging year the world at large has experienced in unison in recent years. Your ability to work within the parameters that were set up this year, sorry, <laughs> that were set up this year, make the most, sorry, we'll begin again. <laughs> the parameters that were set up this year for you make these one of the most difficult and complex environments to learn in. This is like one of the most valuable things you will ever learn in your 14 or 15 years of life. I'm actually very happy that each of you is going to be able to bring your whole selves to your high school of choice this fall. And I mean that literally, head to toe, flesh and blood, out goes the Zoom square. Run, one reason I think this is important, aside from the obvious reasons, it's because at SF Day, we value the idea that everyone in our community, students, teachers, staff, and families, are encouraged to bring their whole selves to school. A lot of effort is put into helping students develop the tools they need to know yourself and have the confidence to bring all of that to school. Now you get to take that idea and bring your whole self to a different school. And after that, a college or a university, after that, a job, and the rest of your life. I hope you can bring your SF Day values of caring for your world and your community wherever you go and contribute to make that place a vibrant one. From kinder to eighth grade, the school and our amazing teachers provide you with a toolkit of skills and values to have impact and to make whichever place you go to a better place. I hope that whether, whether you have been a student at SF Day for nine years or just one year, you know that you have within you the strength that it takes to bring your whole self wherever you go. It is my sincere wish that when you do that, you always keep an open mind, an open heart, and always stay curious. Have a great summer and a phenomenal high school experience. We will now have Lucinda Cahan and Wilder Kagey. <laughs> Just hold on to it. <laughs> 
Uh, now, it is our pleasure to introduce Mr. Maynard. Mr. Maynard, one of the few teachers the whole class has had in both 7th and 8th grade. And because he changed from 7th to 8th grade with us, it is often joked that he will come over to high school with us as well. <laughs> over these two years, he's given us such advice as to never use the phrase, I think, and to also not use filler words. However, the one part of English that everybody remembers is a spelling and grammar app called Membean. We were supposed to do 15 minutes of Membean three times a week to improve our overall literacy. Well, Wilder, I think I haven't done Membean in over a year. Sorry, Mr. Maynard. Now, let's get back to the early memories of Mr. Maynard. I wasn't sure if I should talk about his old, long blonde hair or the fact we used to see him all the time through the hallways and sometimes even at AAP. After many years about hearing about a volleyball coach, we got him as a teacher. Mr. Maynard not only taught us to write an actual essay, but he also taught us how to believe in ourselves, how to believe in our ideas, and how to put them on paper. But really, what he did was teach us how to believe in our own conclusions. You might think, Lucinda, what does that mean? So let me give you an example. Annoying seventh grade Lucinda goes up to Mr. Maynard's desk in the middle of an on-demand essay and asks, could he just edit the whole thing for me and look over it? I'm, I'm a little lost, like just, just edit the whole thing. But Mr. Maynard would never give me the answer, but he would teach me how to do it on my own. And I'm so grateful for that. But enough about myself. Have anybody ever seen Mr. Maynard without a baseball cap and a cup of coffee? Because I think this might be my first time. <laughs> I remember Mr. Maynard in another way, as a cross country coach. During cross country, he would always lead us at a breakneck pace, which he claimed to be his jogging pace, although I do have my doubts. In the past, we were able to do meets with other schools and more practices than we did this year. But this year was not just a loss of some experiences, but a catalyst for us to gain new traditions. One such tradition is frequent trips to a certain Bob's Donuts a few blocks away from school. Mr. Maynard and Mr. Tognetti said it was a reward for our hard work, but I suspect two things. The first of which is that they wanted to get donuts, and the second is that they had to bribe the sixth graders to keep coming back to practice. <laughs> we can go on and on about different stories, but now it's time to introduce the man himself, Mr. Mr. Maynard! <laughs> Wilder, Lucinda, what a wonderful introduction. Um, poignant, funny, to the point. When they asked me if I had any like suggestions for their speech, I just said, please don't get me fired. I think we're good. <laughs> so straight to it. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Well, I will forever be honored to be your commencement speaker and that you made this choice. I will also never forgive you for making me speak in front of adults. <laughs> if there are a rubric for graduation speeches, I'm sure the checkbox for the introduction would say something like, used inspirational quote to hook the audience. Here we go. Middle school was the greatest time of my life. That was said by a late 18th century philosopher. That was said by no one ever. <laughs> ever, ever, ever in the history of ever. Um, because even in the best of times, middle school is really, really hard. In the best of times, middle school is hard. Middle school during a pandemic on Zoom, when the world is literally on fire, but you can't close your windows because there's a virus that you don't know anything about and you have to have ventilation. Round of applause for this eighth grade class. <laughs> Survival would have been enough and you did so much more. So quote thing, we're gonna try it again. Um, when speaking about her husband's time in office, Michelle Obama, once said that being the president does not change who you are, it reveals who you are. 
And I think the same can be said of a pandemic. We learn during this time who and what we prioritize as a country, as communities, as schools, as families. We learned who and what we are willing to sacrifice. We learned which schools could bring their students back and which could not. And I say this just to ground us in the context of what this year was in that reality. We learned that pandemics affect everyone, but not equally. They are harder if you are not white. They are harder if you don't have money. They are harder if you are a mother. And these are not new things. The virus was unprecedented. This year was not unprecedented. These results were not unprecedented. There is precedent for what happened and who was affected most. And as this pandemic comes to an end and we get back to some sense of normalcy, I feel like this is not the time to go back to business as usual, but rather to look in the mirror and ask ourselves, did I turn out to be the person I said I was when it mattered most? It will probably take a long time to gain any sense of clarity on this year and what it all means, but some things are crystal clear um, already. Fact, you as kids were less likely to be harmed by this virus, yet you stayed home to keep your adults safe. You should wear that like a badge of honor because you are, in fact, what we hoped you would be. Kids were the first to sacrifice and the last to get vaccinated, and I didn't hear a complaint from a single one of you because you are what we hoped you would be. When my friend said there's no way middle schoolers can come back to school and stay six feet apart, I looked them straight in the eye and I said, apparently you have never seen the kids at my school slow dance they can stay so far apart from each other. <laughs> Got your backs. <laughs> oh, I'm going to miss you. Um, as much as I love reading stamped with you three times out loud with a mask on, um, as much as I love talking in depth with you about the criminal justice system last year and watching the play you wrote, and as much as I have after, or as much hope as I have after reading your op-eds about democracy, listening to your podcasts about quarantine and skateboarding and immigration, and as much pride as I have in watching you take ownership of your education in our final culminating project. It is the simplest things that I will always remember about you. I will always remember Spaceman. Spaceman is where you put a word on the board and they guess it. If they get a letter wrong, you draw a part of an astronaut. It's like another game you probably played when you were younger, but less offensive. Um, <laughs> for those of you who don't know what Silent Koosh is, Silent Koosh is a game that we play. It's right here. You look the person across from you, you say your name, you throw the koosh, they catch it, that's it. I've never had more fun in my life than I have playing Silent Koosh with this group of kids. I say this because these things have something in common. They are simple. They are fun and you can play them anywhere and have the best time as long as you're with a group of people you love. And it's because I believe in that truth so furiously that I never worried about going to Rob Hill. I never worried about space or equipment or technology or any of that stuff because in this year we did not need a new building. We just needed each other. This year will be remembered for a lot of reasons. But for me, I will remember this year as an affirmation that there is nothing more innovative or transformative in education than the relationship between a teacher and their students and basing that relationship on a foundation of love, respect, and joy. I assigned you men being not because I was gonna count it towards your grade <laughs> or because I have a passion for it, I assigned it because I didn't want to waste a minute of our time together memorizing vocabulary words when we could focus on developing your voices. As you're about to leave, I am very, very happy for you, but I am not happy about this. Not even a little bit. I have complicated feelings that I can't quite express during a speech. And as I learned from Kimia in her culminating project about Taylor Swift, sometimes it's easier to express these complicated feelings in a song. I'd like to thank Olivia Re Rodrigo for writing Driver's License and allowing me to have this melody. <laughs> we 
We got our COVID-19 vaccine <laughs> Like we always knew we would And we were so excited To take off our masks and go back to our school But I showed up in the fall to teach you And cried because them kids, they wasn't you <laughs> This is a breakup song if you're wondering <laughs> You'd probably with some new cool teacher who knows what TikTok is. He probably has a credential and even grows a better mustache than me. But just like that old horse boxer, Animal Farm for context, you took me to the glue back to free. <laughs> We read Animal Farm and Poet X, Monsters Stamped in Just Mercy. What did I do wrong to make all of my friends leave me? I guess you didn't mean when you said you'd be taught by nobody else. Now when I make a space man, I just have to solve it myself. <laughs> At the SF day school, I still see your face on that white line rooftop. Where did I go wrong? Yes, I'm so blue, but you know I still love you eighth grade. Spaceman, silent couch. I still see the lines from that play you wrote. Every note, tell myself I'm fine, but it just ain't true. Cause I will always love you, eighth grade. And if I didn't, I would have never done that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.